Good morning or good afternoon. Thank you all to those who are joining us today, no matter where you might be. We're gonna be discussing why video is a must-have must in your email strategy. We're gonna wait a minute or two just to make sure everybody has a chance to join, and then we'll get started. It's planned for about 40 minutes, and there will be copies of the presentation available after the session. There is an opportunity to do online chat if you have questions as we go. And of course, we're happy to address any questions after the presentation as well. Again, we'll get started in uh, just a few. Okay, well, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm gonna now load up our presentation here and everyone should be able to see my screens. So we're gonna to talk today about why video is a must have in your email strategy. Just by way of background, my name is Jeff Kupietsky. I'm the CEO of Power Inbox and we'll wait till the end and we'll talk a little about what we do. But I've been in the digital media space for over 20 years. I've been fortunate enough to work with many um, wonderful organizations in both online banking, online travel, uh, performance marketing, uh, monetization businesses. And I've been uh, leading up the Power Inbox team for about five years now. Let's talk about video. We're gonna talk about kind of uh, what, what the trends are in video overall and how it's become marketing's favorite tool. But for a bunch of reasons, it's not really made its way inside email. So we'll talk today about what some of those challenges are and how we're addressing that so we can enable the, all the benefits of video inside email. We'll share a bunch of client examples so you can get a sense of what some of the best practices are in terms of including video inside email. I'll show you how you can easily add it to your existing campaigns. We'll kind of end with a couple of tips for how you can get started today and then some very specific takeaways. So let's uh, jump right in. As many of you uh, probably feel, and you see it when you start looking at some of the social media sites that you're using, there's been a huge push in the last couple of years to promote video-based content. In fact, certain statistics are saying that now Facebook, 80% of its traffic is now on video views. And we all know that you open up your newsfeed and you're starting to see those autoplay videos as people are kind of showing you content and they really capture your attention. Twitter has been promoting this. And obviously the second most searched site in the world after Google is their subsidiary YouTube. And obviously the largest depository of kind of self-made video content. You see that with some of the up and coming uh, products like Instagram or Snapchat where they've moved primarily to a video based platform and even some video specific products like a Vine or a Meerkat where people are now doing self publishing or real time um, streaming of their own video content. So we know video is everywhere in fact, even the data marketers are starting to kind of share some of these numbers that are just astounding here. People are average in the United States spending over two hours a day on digital video, and that's up from only about 40 minutes five years ago. It is now the highest use of any kind of other platform, and going back to what we previously talked about, given that social networks and Facebook are also on this list, imagine if you count the video time within those platforms, it's probably an even larger number. And why is it that people like it so much? Well, obviously, it's very engaging. And kind of one quick way, if I can, I'll demonstrate that with, of course, a pet-based video. So this is actually a branded video. I'll let you kind of enjoy. It's about a minute long. So why are these so engaging? 
Obviously, they've got the cute pets. They've got the fact that there's two types of animals kind of all kind of playing near each other. I'm going to ask you at the end who you think this is the brand for this commercial. You'd be a little surprised at kind of what they're promoting here. And they're uh, almost done here, another 30 seconds. There were the uh, cats that you saw in the video. Almost done here. So this was an ad for Android, and I'm sure uh, most folks kind of recognize that and realize that that is something that really plays to their um, that their skill sets in that they're trying to promote their alternative to the iPhone platform. And what they've basically demonstrated is that it's a really powerful way to communicate their brand, explain their value proposition, and ultimately build relationships. They wanted their consumers to know that they're different, right, but that they work together, i.e. that they're the compatible interface. They're the operating system that people use no matter what device you're on. And that really played to their strengths by using video. Video has a strong emotional component to it. It allows you to use rich imagery. It allows you to also use metaphors or other things to help demonstrate the feel of your brand. And that's why it's so engaging. In fact, most people also find that this is the type of content that they're easily able to share. That video was sent to me by a colleague because they thought it was a witty way to kind of demonstrate Android's brand. Most folks, as you can see from this slide, 65%, they're going to watch something based on a video and then go to their website afterwards. And 70% of marketing professionals report that video converts better. And ultimately, as we all know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a lot more than that. So it's not just large, but it's actually growing as well. We see here last year, it was about an hour and 15 minutes were spent by each U.S. adult on digital video compared to TV, which is still obviously over four hours. But you can see how the share is slowly shifting from the analog to the online equivalent. And all that means is that now marketers, as they recognize where people are spending their time, they're shifting their ad dollars there as well. It's estimated that in the United States, over $22 billion will be spent by 2020 on online video ads. And to put that in perspective, just five years ago, it was uh, zero, now it's five billion. And again, it's not yet taking over where TV is, we all know that's about 40 billion. But look how fast it's expected to grow. And the reason why it's, again, a preferred channel for marketers is because this is where people are spending their time, and it is a great platform to engage end users and better target them with your message. Just some other key facts about why video marketing has become so hot right now. It leads to a huge increase in conversion rate. Obviously, it's more engaging content. It's something that's going to capture your users' attention. People are more likely to convert after watching it because it, like television commercials, it grabs their attention. It's got that emotional component. And because of that, most marketers are now in planning to increase their budgets. People are already using that in their marketing mix. And even small businesses are starting to kind of use that as well. We found this stat pretty interesting that out of all the areas that marketing folks are looking to increase their budget, video is the one that more percentage of uh, B2B marketers have suggested than any other channel or uh, aspect of their marketing mix. So for those on the phone who might be in the B2B space versus just typically B2C, you're going to see more and more kind of opportunity to use video as well. And finally, the reason for that, again, is because when you measure engagement, when you measure the fact that people are actually now really understanding your brand promise and understand what product or service you're offering, video has the best opportunity to kind of present that. So just some more stats there about why it kind of leads to more engagement. So we know that video is growing, we know that it's very popular, and we know it's something that people are starting to use in an increasing level in their marketing mix. But as we think about it, why has it not introduced itself yet inside email? And just a couple of words about email for those who are not as familiar with kind of the trends. More marketers are using email this year than ever before. More people are sending than ever before. It remains the workhorse within the marketing channel. And in fact, most data supports that it's the highest ROI of any other aspect in your marketing mix. The reason why email is so persistent, and we believe long-term will continue to be a major part of your mix, it's the only place where you have a direct relationship with your end user 
where you can actually track their behavior and they'll engage with you no matter what device they're on. In fact, we always like to quote this stat that people are three times as likely to change their physical address in the United States versus their email address. And as you know, you can receive information from, from, from brands at work on a desktop, during the day on your mobile device, or maybe at night on the couch on a tablet. And if there's ways to kind of connect all that together, that's what makes email such a powerful mechanism. But as we think about introducing video into email, there's a couple of challenges and restrictions. The first is that for the most part, email has been a very static environment. People are not used to seeing things move in email. They're not used to seeing video. They also generally get the same message from uh, that everybody else is receiving. There's not as much opportunity to do personalization. Many folks that we talk to start with the fact that they've always been creating emails for the desktop, and desktop has certain uh, uh, capabilities to show aspects of video that mobile does not, and the reverse is true as well. The mobile device is a very different way to consume content, and for those who are still creating emails with a desktop orientation in mind, will miss out on what the promise is of video. Many of our clients tell us that they continue to use manual efforts to update editorial content in email as opposed to, let's say, on their website where it's highly automated and now it's done the same way they would kind of any kind of machine-based product. And probably the most important thing is there's limited support for the traditional video players. Whereas on the web, if you send somebody to a video, obviously they'll have a flash player or they have ways to play that video that does not work in email. And so many people who have good content are shut out from sharing that with their end users. But the challenge is we have to figure out how to solve this because it turns out many of our clients, and I'm sure people in the audience will feel this, over 50% of emails are now being opened up on a mobile device, but fully one third of those emails will be deleted in the first two seconds. In fact, we can measure engagement or time spent in email, and we see again and again without dynamic content, without the ability to capture your user's attention in the first two seconds, it's very hard to get them to pay attention. So you have all these kind of challenges and video, which has this great promise of emotional connection, of being dynamic, of being able to even potentially be personalized, it's been limited to not being able to be shown in email, that is, until now. And we'll talk about now opportunities to show email in video and how brands have successfully deployed that as part of their strategy. Probably the best way to do that is to just bring up some examples, and so we'll get right to that. Let's start with a brand that hopefully people are familiar with. It's the National Hockey League. And if you think about the product here that they are, this is an email that they sent out. They're trying to promote Game Center Live. Game Center is a video product. It's actually their app that allows you to watch real-time games. And their message is you can watch those games on any device. And the way that they were able to demonstrate that is by playing a video inside the email. It's actually in this email, it's not one video, but four videos, each of which are playing on a loop without sound on an automated fashion. Now, in a lot of the examples I'm gonna show, you won't hear sound and you will see this looping function. And that's because with a lot of testing, we've determined that Facebook and others that have promoted video in their products have realized that having autoplay, where sound is automatically turned off, is the best way forward to engage your users. The last thing your brand wants is someone in a quiet office to click on an email and suddenly it starts blaring out the cat commercial. Instead, you have the opportunity to subtly show a user a dynamic experience and get them to want to engage in the content. In the case of the NHL, they were able to see very, very good conversion because people saw the product in action. It grabbed their attention and it allowed them to kind of show off the product that they were selling. Here's another example from one of our clients, again, another sports client, the National Football League, was promoting Football America right around the uh, Super Bowl Sunday. So I believe even our friends across the pond probably got wind of that event. It is streamed kind of all over the world. And to promote the Super Bowl, what they did was promote a video content that was going to air during the same, uh, I'm sorry, right before the game was supposed to start. In this video, you see, again, it's playing on a loop. It's highlights from an hour-long show that they were able to show here in a very, very specific clip of seven seconds long. But the benefit to the user is, again, as you see me kind of open up an email and imagine I've got 100 of these and I'm going through, it stops me in my tracks, gets me to pay attention, 
And then the call to action is obviously to click through and learn more about the football in America. So they were able to successfully use video content inside their email to capture their users' attention. Here's another example. It's a little more subtle. This is in a Universal Studios email. And so obviously they're promoting content like get a uh, three-month uh, free pass or other events that are playing for folks that come to their parks. But video in this case turns out to be a specific promotion that is buried within the email content that's highlighting the fact that there's this Hunter Hayes concert. And the reason why that works really well is that it offsets from the rest of the email content. Most email content is static, it's image or text-based, and here you see very nicely kind of blending in with the rest of the look and feel of the email, the ability to show video. Um, this is another example, and I'm actually gonna come back to this one because it allows us also to demonstrate how you could do sound within email. But the Susan G. Komen Foundation was looking to promote a very serious topic, which is how can they raise money for those who are suffering from cancer? So they created two versions of the email that we helped them with. One allowed them to show the teaser inside the email, and that again plays on a loop with a specific call to action. In this case, the call to action was not to go to the landing page, was to actually watch the full video. So a user that would actually click on that then would see the full video, and I have my sound turned down here, but you have a two minute full version of the video as a second click from the teaser. And the reason why we believe this is actually very important, again, from an approach, is it's really the benefit of having the folks that actually come to you first, no matter what email client they're on, with the exception of Outlook, you'll be able to see video content like that we're showing. If you have heard about this in the past and heard about some of the restrictions that email clients can provide, many email clients do not allow a player to work inside email. They don't allow video with audio to play. They don't allow a full set of controls. And so this approach here allows you to have something that plays for all audiences across all email clients. And then there's an additional action for the end user who wants to engage further with the content. So as a marketer, you have two opportunities. You can play the teaser content and then link them to the full length feature, or you can just link them directly to your call to action. And that's why that campaign was also very successful for the brand. Uh, a little more kind of on the fun side, folks are probably familiar with Dollar Shave Club. They have very witty advertising. And so they took one of their commercials and just took a small snippet here, which is their CEO kind of uh, mishandling here, wrapping a package and using his machete to help cut the tape. And they just played that obviously on a recurring basis in order to get people to kind of engage with their content. Similarly, on the Weight Watcher side, this is kind of promoting their new owner, uh, Oprah, with a uh, play button that's over their video because they really want people here to have the opportunity to engage with that content. And I'm going to show you very easy ways, at least on our platform, to add all these different configurations inside your email without having any type of um, video expertise or even at HTML expertise. So let's get into kind of how do you create these. So the way this could work is you can use a platform like ours, and what allows you to do is take content that already is available to you, and I'll actually demonstrate that here, where you might have, let's say, a video that you have uh, potentially on your website, or you might have it in YouTube. So no matter where that video is located, you'd be able to bring that in as a specific file, and then create video to play in email. So I'll demonstrate that here with just some stock video that we already preloaded. The way our platform would work is you would name this component, so video one, you would set its dimensions. That allows you to set the width here of the thumbnail. We recommend typically around 200 to 300 pixels. And again, the benefit of that is it really makes it a sharp contrast to the rest of the email. Um, you can have the ability to look, look at an entire hero image, but we generally recommend, and we'll talk about optimization steps in a second. But the user that then decides their width, they then have the opportunity to upload that video. Again, you don't have to shoot something specifically just for uh, email. You can leverage the assets that you already have. And a user would come in and decide what's the amount of time that they have to kind of show a snippet. So we have an automated editing tool here. You can tell us what time you start the video, for how long the duration, you can kind of decide in seconds. The reason why we have a maximum of seven seconds is that allows the size of the component to not be too big that it would become truncated 
when it gets sent out from your email program. And I should mention again, this capability works across any email sending solution. So if you're using Constant Contact or Epson or MailChimp or Neolane or any type of solution to send email, you'll be able to use this type of solution. There's features to be able to add, let's say a loop or no loop to show the play button, et cetera. And then in our system, once you click save, based on the, the parameters that you set, you'll be given back an opportunity to copy a small set of HTML. That small piece of HTML then goes inside your newsletter. And by pasting it in, it can exist with the rest of your content and now you can show video inside email. So hopefully you've, you saw from this demonstration, you don't need to have any uh, video editing tools. You don't even have to know any HTML. You just need to follow a set of parameters and you can create video inside your email. So with that as background now, let's go through a couple of tips that we've found after working with many, many different clients about video and email about how they were able to really optimize the experience. And as part of this section, I'll also share with you some more case studies of clients that have successfully used video inside email. So let's start with finding the content. Many clients come to us and say, one of our challenges is that we don't have a video production shop. We don't even have any access to kind of content that we can show easily inside our email. And we certainly don't have a creative team to kind of work with that. So our advice about that is to be able to start with any existing video assets. There must be something that you guys have, whether it's tutorials or a commercial or previous product information that you can use. All we would need to see is either a YouTube link or an MP4 formatted video, and that can be easily converted into the format that we use to play inside email. In fact, many of our clients have, you know, even just from your phone, you can film a testimonial from a client or to kind of take snippets from a, a commercial that might have been professionally created. We can even, this is on a custom basis, we can even help folks create video with a set of still images. So if you have lots of different photos of a product or a service, we can create those together and create the feeling of a video, and that can work as well. We definitely recommend testing different approaches, different images. I'll share here from one of our leagues that we've worked with that they found that because fans recognize specific favorite players, they found that as they go to certain markets, when they test their video content, they ensure that there's at least one player from that market who's prominently featured in their video program. In fact, even if they're promoting um, a service that's not based on just uh, the players, they always see a lift when they put a favorite player in the creative. So it's definitely the type of thing that you want to test and optimize around. Once you have your content, the next step is to optimize where you place it and how you work with that. So the big question always comes up, do you put it in the hero image where it's the primary thing that people see or perhaps down below like thumbnails? And again, I'll just show a quick example here of what we're referring to. And the real difference is whether or not the content is the primary thing that you're presenting or it's just one of other things. So in this example from HBO, they had a couple of different shows that they wanted to promote, but the main one was a Kurt Cobain movie that was just coming out that they showed a teaser for, and that was for the movie Cobain. And so the opportunity here to kind of show something in the hero image is what they were looking to promote. Whereas other folks might want, like we showed you with the universal example, the thumbnail is a great way to kind of say, this is also something you might be interested in. The other opportunity is whether or not you have autoplay or sound. As we showed you earlier with the example from Susan Komen, you don't necessarily have to make this trade-off. You can have both. We always recommend the autoplay first. Again, think of the crowded office scenario where you don't want sound to automatically play. And the user can always click through to see a full representation of the video. Or the user can then choose a call to action that goes straight to your landing page. The other decision that comes up is you want to loop the video. So again, if this is a seven second clip, we recommend looping it. And the benefit of that is no matter when the user actually is fully paying attention to the email, they'll always see something dynamic and moving. We wouldn't want to underestimate the power of having something move inside the email as a way to capture somebody's attention. And time and time again, we do see the results that correlate with the fact 
that as people actually are seeing content move, it does get them to spend more time in the email and make them more likely to pay attention to your message. You can add a click-through on the email itself or below the email. We definitely recommend both because that way, no matter where the user puts their cursor when they're watching the content, they can go to the next action, which is to click through right after the video has finished playing. And the length here matters, right? If you've got a 45-minute documentary, uh, we definitely recommend you taking a very small snippet of that and thinking about the use case. Especially, again, think about your user on a mobile phone. They're not going to want to spend a lot of time on it. That seven seconds, we will tell you, is the ideal length. It's long enough to show interest, but short enough to ensure you're getting the call to action. The average user spends about 10 seconds in an email, so having a seven-second video clip still provides enough time for them to choose which call to action and get them on their way to go back to your website, which is what hopefully you sent the email for to begin with. Here's an example I'd like to show of kind of somebody who successfully used this, and that was um, the folks at Edmund. And actually, I'll, I'll click on the link here so we kind of refresh the page. And what they were trying to promote here is a standard newsletter that then they changed the content that they had with video-based content after they had tested it in both this spot and this spot, and then finally on the top spot. And what they found was without a loop, that was actually the best positioning for them because it got the people to pay attention and then drive the behavior that they wanted, which is to click through below that video onto the other aspects of the content. And so people say, well, did it work? They saw a 30% increase in their click-through rate and a 40% increase in revenue. People ask, why do they have more revenue uh, than, you know, than, than their clicks? And the answer is the video really helped the, focus the user on what was the type of product they were interested in. And that allowed them to then be more targeted in what content the user then consumes when they're on their website, which led to higher revenue. In their situation, given the cost to use the service, they saw a 600% ROI. That means they got $6 for every dollar that they had spent, and this was in a very short time period. So if you've got the ability to actually create content from anywhere, optimize what you show, obviously the next tip is how do you measure the results and make sure you're getting the best outcome. So one of the things that's unique to at least our platform is we always encourage people, since we're talking about engagement, you should measure engagement. And the best way to measure engagement is by looking at a metric of time spent in email. And I'll show you in just a second how easy it is for us to help you do that. You also want to look at CTR improvement. Run a campaign with the video and without the video. Did more people click overall because they saw the video content? That will help you demonstrate the value of the product inside your organization and then show improvements around that. Ultimately, it's not just about the click-through rate. You also want to see higher conversion. And that could be either signups, additional payments of subscriptions, more app downloads or purchases. Almost all the calls to action that you would put in your email, you would be looking to drive a particular behavior. And we would submit that you can expect somewhere between 10 to 30% improvement in those metrics by using video inside your email. There's also the ancillary benefit. Are you getting more of the content to be shared? Video is a very easy type of product to share. So you can have a share button right below the video in your email or even on your site where they see the full length of the content, you'd be able to kind of show that as well. And ultimately, you want to make sure there's no downside effect. Did my deliverability rate be affected? Was my unsubscribe rate affected? In fact, we would submit that if the content is engaging enough, you'll find people finding more value in the content and therefore more likely to actually open and subscribe to your emails in the future. And ultimately, the proof of all that is having deeper trust for your brand and your product. So hopefully these are all intuitive ways to measure results. I said that I would show you kind of example of how to do that measurement, and let me kind of show you that now. So within at least our platform, we'll have the ability to actually show you automatically some of the results from using this type of component directly within your, your dashboard. So here I'm showing kind of this is a, a previous campaign that was done. Um, and what you can see here is just with a, an easy graphing tool, we can show what time the opens happened. We can show where the opens happened by environment, by device. And again, for video, this becomes very important. We can also show where did the opens happen, you know, which part of the United States or even worldwide. And we can actually see, so how many folks opened up in Norway or in Great Britain. 
And then on top of that, we have this new metric that we mentioned earlier, time and email. And the way that we actually visualize that is for this campaign, we looked at a sampling of how many people actually glanced or deleted the email by not spending more than two seconds on it. It turns out that's 14%. In most of our campaigns, we see actually as high as 30% people in two seconds. The next category is skimming, 20%. And the final category is people who spend at least 10 seconds. Where you include video and email, having a measurement of time and email, you'll see a direct correlation of having higher engagement. And that would be measured by more people reading the email, that is spending more than 10 seconds, and fewer people deleting the email, i.e. opening it up and then moving on right away. So this is just one way to kind of show some examples of how you can measure the performance. And of course, we have the other measurements that we talked about earlier. Now let's kind of show another example of a case study. This was from uh, eHow, part of Demand Media. And to show you kind of their video here, this was a trending product that their e-commerce folks were looking to kind of uh, create more interest in. And because it is a tip or a tool, what they wanted to show was something that you can show very easily at home. And again, if this feels like a Facebook kind of how-to video, that's exactly what they're trying to get to. That content is being consumed right now. It's 80% of Facebook's content are their autoplay videos. You can have that same experience inside email. And so for the folks at eHow, they use the same concept. They put it in the hero image, and the results were 42% increase in clicks, 2.7 times more clicks on their hero image. And ultimately, they actually had fewer unsubscribes because this is content that's very valuable. The users here, even if they don't buy the product or don't click any further, they're now getting a pretty cool tip of how they can have a non-slip hanger. Okay, the final tip is an obvious one, which is don't stop after the first send. You want to optimize. You want to rinse and repeat. And what we mean by that is constantly run, even if it's the same campaign, with slight differences. You can change where the video is. You can change actually if it has a play button or not. You can uh, change off also which subscribers are receiving that content. It's a very easy to use type of feature, and therefore it's also very easy to optimize by changing both the content and the placement and the calls to action to the users who receive it. Okay, we're gonna be getting into the wrap up here and I'm gonna leave time for questions, but I just wanna talk about some other use cases of video inside email. A quick word about our company. So we provide dynamic content inside email. And what that means is we provide the ability to do things like video and email, along with aspects like countdown timers or product sliders or carousels. In fact, just to quickly show, our company Power Inbox has the ability to put many different widgets inside your email that all have all the same type of functionality of driving more interest or relevancy to your content. So that could be things like zooming an image or fading. It could be having weather-based content add to calendar. You saw some of the scrolling images that we had earlier in some of the items. And that includes other items like Instagram or RSS or personalization of content. So the purpose of this webinar was not to cover the other aspects, but I did want to highlight that video is just one of many things that you can apply to actually build engagement, build more value in your email program. But for those who are looking to build their lists, to look to acquire more users, the other place that we're seeing video and email have a very strong relevance is actually as an advertising medium. So the same way that you would see ads on a website, and more and more of those ads are now being video-based, there's actually now the capability of putting video inside email as uh, an opportunity to show that for users to promote traffic. One part of our organization sells those ad units and we have the ability to actually show folks video inside email. And while I've got a bunch of examples, I would be remiss if I didn't show you at least one example, which is the ability to see cat videos inside an email as a promotional piece of content. So this is a demo, but just to show you kind of three different examples here, these are all video ads playing inside email on a promoted basis. We call it Revenue Stripe, but if you're looking for the ability to kind of use really engaging content, and obviously cat videos aside, there's a great way to promote your brand in other people's emails. 
And that's another value proposition that you might have. I'm going to get to the wrap up very soon, but I want to stop and pause here and just see if there are questions so far or anything that people are bringing up. So one question that's coming up is uh, whether or not this works across all platforms. And again, just to reiterate, the video solution that Power Inbox supports runs on every platform with the exception of the desktop outlook. For many of our clients, desktop outlook now represents less than five minutes, I'm sorry, less than 5% of their user base, and therefore it's a small amount, those users would still, still see a video play button or an image, and then from there they can click through. Another question is cost, and we're happy to kind of talk about that obviously offline. This can be done for as few as a couple of hundred dollars for a campaign. So this is the type of thing that definitely you can talk to us, and we'll give you a call to action at the end here of how to reach us, but it does not have to be in the tens of thousands of dollars to create an experience of video and email. And in fact, in our model, which is unique in the industry, you could even potentially purchase an unlimited package where it's not based on volume. So you've got lots of flexibility to use a product like this across all the different email campaigns that you do. Now, we've shown you a lot of examples, and as I mentioned, you'll have the ability to get a copy of the slides, but I wanted to give people now a chance, if you'd like, to see some of the examples that we already went through, if you send an email to demo at powerinbox.com, D-E-M-O at powerinbox.com, in the subject line you can leave it blank or write test, then what you're doing is you're gonna be sending us an email and then we auto respond to that with a set of examples. The first example in that email will be a video play. So you'll be able to right now see exactly how this works across all your different email clients we also have a couple of other examples of our other features in that email. And I should point out, um, because it is a, a webinar and we're asking people to sign up, if you do send us an email, you will be opting in, of course, to our newsletter. Of course, you can always unsubscribe if you don't want to receive that. So the real benefit, though, here is that folks can try out this code. You can take a look at it. And then, obviously, we'd be happy to customize something from you. So once again, if you want to see an example, just send an email to demo at Power Inbox and you'll be able to see examples right now in your email. So let's start to wrap up here. What did we talk about? Hopefully you saw that video is a growing and essential part of marketing. In fact, I'd highly encourage if video is not part of your current marketing mix, whether in email or not, you should make sure that's a priority today. Whether that's in your content marketing strategies, developing more video content, or just looking to repurpose items that you already have elsewhere inside your marketing mix. That could be in blogs, that could be on the website, and of course, it's now easy to include that content in email as well. Best practices are to show teaser-based content, just like you would see in an ad, in order to drive users back to your website. We don't believe email is the right format for a full-length or long-form video, and it certainly should not be the place to, to have sound where the user might be in an uncomfortable situation. Take a lesson from the social media giants and see how autoplay is really driving both ad units for Facebook and engagement. And then finally, it's very important to measure placement and performance for your optimum results. You can expect lots of different variants, and the idea is to constantly place that and what make it new and fresh for the user, and you'll see lift that goes associated with that. Because the tool is automated, it's very easy to change out the video, try different placements, and continue to iterate on that. And again, even if you don't have video content, even if you only have a set of images, our, client, our, our company would be very happy to help you create a video and email based on that. All right, so what about what you can do today? Well, let's give you a very specific call to action. First off, our company would be very happy to give you a free video demonstration in your own email with your own content. So that's something we can set up for you today. And along with that, we can provide a free consulting service to assess your campaign and how best to leverage that type of asset. If you're interested in this free offer, please send us an email to say hello at powerinbox.com, and we'll make sure that one of our reps gets back to you. Again, there's no charge to get the free example. There's no charge to get our consulting service, but we do look forward to the engagement that we'll have by understanding your needs and understanding ways that we can work together. We've been fortunate to work with many, many different brands. 
and I'll show you that right here, who have been using our technology successfully across their programs. We showed you earlier Universal and NFL and Edmonds. You can add to that Sephora, General Motors, HBO. There's actually over 300 different clients that are using our solution, and we'd love to add your name to this growing list as well. So in conclusion, I wanna thank everybody for the time that they've had today to join us to talk about email and video in email. And at this point, I'll check again if there are any other further questions so we can address those before we close down the webinar. If you'd like to reach me, you can at say hello at Power Inbox or sales at Power Inbox or jeff at powerinbox.com. And thank you so much for spending the time with us today. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna close the webinar. We thank everybody for participating. If you'd like a copy of the slides, just send us a note at say hello at powerinbox.com or you can always email me directly at jeff at powerinbox.com. Thank you all very much. We'll now put it on pause.